Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video I'm going to be talking about long run average cost curve. So I'm going to be talking about the long run uh, average cost curve, right? So, so it's average cost curve, right? So uh, before we start that, I hope you've already watched the previous videos and in that those videos we actually defined a lot of things like long run, what is short run. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to define the long run again. So a long run is the time period, is the time period where all the factors of production are variable. It's the time period where all the factors of production, so whatever factors of production are there, uh, which actually take part in the production, all the factors of production are variable, right? So that means you can actually vary everything, right? However, the only thing which is fixed is actually the state of technology, which is kind of, uh, you know, not fixed because it is kind of fixed because you cannot change technology in the long run. So this is something that, you know, it's fixed in the long run. Rest all the factors stay, uh, stay variable. You can actually vary any factor that you want. Now, since we talked about uh, the cost curve, so this was our cost and this was our quantity. And we actually found out that, you know, this the this was the midpoint of uh, the lowest point of our average curve and marginal cost was actually cutting the average cost at its lowest point. Now this is the point, this is the situation that every firm wants to be in, right? So every firm wants to have the minimum cost. So to have the minimum cost, they would actually produce this much quantity and this would be the minimum cost. So everyone wants, everyone wants to produce this level of quantity, right? So let's actually go ahead and see what happens. So let's suppose if I say that this is our cost, right? So this is our cost and I say this is our quantity, right? So, sorry, this is the output that we produce in units. So this is something which is in terms of dollars. This is something which is in terms of units. And let's suppose, uh, I'm talking about the long run, let's suppose that this is the, uh, this is one of the short run average curves. So this is, let's suppose, the short run average curve 1. And right now, the company is at this particular cost. It's actually producing C3 units, uh, sorry, it's, it's actually incurring C3 cost and producing Q1 units. Now what, what does the company want? The company actually wants to reach here, right? So actually, the company actually wants to produce Q2 units. However, uh, to move from Q1 to Q2, you'll have to change a lot of fixed factors. The fixed factors would actually be changed, right? Because uh, the variable factors won't be able to produce uh, this many, uh, you know, variable factors won't be able to produce this many, uh, you know, uh, output this many units of output so what you will do is you'll actually want to shift from here to here you'll actually change your way change your fixed factors like you know buy more machines you know uh, add more machinery or you know uh, acquire more land all right so acquire more labor so you will actually shift from this short run average curve to another short run average curve which will actually give you a lower cost. So what you will do is you'll shift from, uh, you know, you will actually shift from this short run average curve to another short run average curve. Let's suppose this is that short run average curve, right? So you will actually shift from this short run average curve to this short run average curve. So this is the short run average curve too. And now you will be producing this much quantity at this much price right however now you want to reach here now if you want to reach here you want to produce this many amount of units so what will happen again you will shift from another cost curve to another cost curve because again you will be uh, you know you will be changing a lot of variable factors right so what will happen is you will actually shift from to another curve wherein you will be actually producing this many units at this much cost. So likewise, there will be infinite number of short run average curves. However, let's suppose you want to reach here, right? And you want to reach here, then uh, there would be one short run average curve with wherein you will actually be meeting the minimum point. So there will be one short run average curve where actually you'll be meeting the minimum point and that would be your 
uh, you know, lowest ever cost that you will actually produce at. So that would be the lowest ever cost that you will actually produce at. And after that, when you start increasing, let's suppose you want to increase the output, right? You increase the output again. Your costs are actually going to increase. So if you increase the output, your costs are actually going to increase and you will be producing this many units at this much cost, right? And eventually your short run average curve, again, you kind of reach the same level. So later on, if you keep on producing more and more units, you would be, you know, completely using up, you'll be completely using up your, uh, you know, you'll be completely using up your uh, fixed factors. You'll need more fixed factors. You'll need to buy more machinery. You need to buy more stuff and your cost per unit will actually increase back again. So if I just connect these points, you know, if I just connect these points, this is what I get. So if I just connect these points, this is what I am going to get, right? Which would be my long run average curve. So what I'll do is I'll actually, you know, uh, draw it much more beautifully. The last one was just to explain you. So this is the cost, right? And this is my quant output, right? And what happens is this is my long run average curve, right? So this is my long run average curve. And right now uh, what I'm doing is I'm producing uh, this many units. Uh, so this is my short run average curve one. Then this is, let's say, my short run average curve two. I want to reach here. So this is my minimum short run average curve where the minimum point actually meets the long run average curve. And then again, as I produce more and more, my cost just keeps on increasing. So these are those short run average curves which are there, which actually make up the total long run curve. Right. So this is the long run average curve. So I suppose you're understanding this point here. And this is the optimum amount of quantity that you'll be producing at this, this much cost. You won't actually have a cost lower than this. Now, if I were to kind of, uh, you know, break this graph into some parts, if I say, let's suppose I break this graph into some parts, uh, this is the cost and this is the quantity. Uh, the long run average curve has actually three parts, this part, this part and this part. Right. So if I kind of break this into these parts, so I have this part, I have this part and I have this part. Right. So what happens here in this area right here? In this area, we actually get increasing returns to scale. So actually we get increasing returns to scale. What do you mean by increasing returns to scale? That means uh, when you increase your output, your cost decreases. So in this, when you increase your output, your cost decreases. Now this over here is actually something that we call as constant returns to scale. So what do you mean by constant returns to scale? That actually means uh, even if I increase my uh, if I increase my output, right, my my cost is actually going to remain the same, right? So this is constant returns to scale. I will actually be keeping my average cost same. And this over here is something that we call as the decreasing returns to scale. So what do you mean by decreasing returns to scale? As you increase your output, your cost also increases, right? So this is what we what we mean about you know the increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale, and the decreasing returns to scale, which which pretty much says that that when a company actually starts here, you know when a firm actually starts here, it has very high cost. But as it increases its output, as we increase from here till here, it actually reaches its minimum cost. It stays at that minimum cost for a long time. And after that, after a level of output, the cost tend to increase. Now understand one thing. In reality, the decreasing, decreasing returns to scale have not been proved yet. So in reality, re decreasing returns to scale very rarely happen. Right. So usually when a firm reaches here, you know, it eventually stays here only. So that so this is something which is kind of conceptual right now. Right. So so that's there. Fine. So, you know, I suppose you're understanding this point. Now, what do you mean by uh, increasing returns to scale? So suppose I've already told you that increasing returns to scale will actually lead to so increasing returns to scale will actually be uh, leading you to uh, economies of scale, which actually means that as you increase your output, your cost decreases.
and uh, decreasing returns to scale so decreasing returns to scale actually means this economies of scale so it means this economies of scale which actually means as you increase your output your cost average cost actually increases so i'm talking about the average cost right fine so uh, i suppose you've understood this point over here guys so thank you very much for watching this video and uh, in the next video we're going to be talking about the revenues you've talked about the cost the next video we'll be talking about the revenues so before we depart just make sure that you explore this website that is perfect-scores.com a lot of exciting stuff there don't forget to follow us on facebook and twitter and uh, this would be our valuable this would be the email address to give us your valuable feedback so thank you very much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one